Terry Mason has been singing most of her life, touring with Broadway musicals Annie, 42nd Street, and Cats. Only what I got. But in 1994, her voice began to change. I just began to have a little bit of difficulty speaking. I heard little rattles. It was difficult for me to call across the room or to, to project very loudly. And then it progressively got worse over the years. And around 1998 and 1999, it was very, very difficult to speak. Terry and I started talking about it more and more. Um, I think she noticed that I was saying, what did you say? I'm sorry, I didn't understand. People always ask me, are you crying? Are you OK? It sounds like you're in pain, but it doesn't hurt. It's just difficult to speak. Terry was diagnosed with a condition called spasmodic dysphonia, a vocal cord disorder affecting 35,000 Americans. Terry suffers from the most common or adductor variety. Vocal cords close just tightly enough so that the lung pressure sets them into vibration. But in patients with spasmodic dysonia, for some reason, the larynx closes too tightly for the lung pressure. And it doesn't matter what pressure the lungs apply to it, the larynx closes even tighter. Say this sound. Go ahead. Terry underwent extensive testing by Dr. Burke and his team, followed by repeated Botox injections that brought temporary relief. Yes. The structures above constrict so much. Uh, some patients uh, that I've seen uh, have had to quit their job or they've lost their job because they can no longer function. You can imagine an attorney, a teacher, an actor, a singer who's afflicted with this problem. But UCLA's chief of head and neck surgery, Dr. Gerald Burke and his team are now able to offer Terry a cure, a surgery pioneered by Dr. Burke at UCLA. Having developed it here at UCLA, it took us a long time to decide whether or not this was really going to work. But now that we've actually been performing the procedure over eight years and we've been modifying it and refining it, I think our cure rate is probably around 95 percent. And so we're very enthusiastic now. I'm looking forward to the surgery. I have great faith in Dr. Burke and the whole team that's going to be working on it. I think it's, it has a high success ratio. And I have every confidence that I'll come out of this with a really good, solid speaking voice for the first time in a long time. Terry will undergo four hours of surgery. Dr. Burke and his team make a small incision into the larynx. Through small windows that we make in the voice box, we can actually find the nerve that goes to the muscle that's in spasm. And we sever that nerve. And then we graft on new nerves on both sides to the, the muscle that was in spasm. The new nerves will allow the muscles controlling Terry's vocal cords to function normally. Surgeons from all over the country have come to observe and learn Dr. Burke's technique. Terry will spend the night in the hospital and go home the next day. And she should do, I think, very well with the surgery. I'm sure that we can cure her. Terry is the latest of more than 100 patients to undergo this breakthrough procedure at UCLA. Yes. Uh -huh. I was manager of marketing communications for a worldwide company. I was new. Um, I was meeting all these people. I was having to talk on the phone. I was constantly apologizing for the way I sounded. I sounded so horrible. And these people didn't know me. And I'd say, I, gee, I'm sorry, I, I sound like I'm an old woman. I sound like I'm on my deathbed. You know, that's how it seemed to me. Sherry Penny listens to a recording of her voice from two years ago before it's surgery. Gone. It's gotten tight all the time and uh, <clears throat> sometimes I don't even have a voice it's like he gave me back my life six weeks after surgery Terry Mason is on the mend complete recovery will take six months to a year but the early results are clear well the difference is that there are no spasms it's not there's no effort when I speak when I speak the sound just comes out but this is wonderful. Terry no longer needs Botox injections, and as with dozens of others who have undergone this procedure, spasmodic dysphonia is now a thing of the past. I, I'm actually feeling like I will be able to sing again, probably with unlimited range, but I will sing, so that's fun. So it's kind of good.